Wow. Did you, did you make it through? Incredibly hard day for me yesterday. Uh, unbelievable. The, uh, but a breakthrough, too, in the end. And I was just praying to the Lord, and, and I talked to the Lord all night. I just, Lord, this, Lord, that. What about when they did that? What about when they did this? And I realized there were so many fragments of having been hurt and then splitting when someone said something, when someone did something, uh, so much triggering that went on. But when I say splits, I mean another, it's like someone does something to you, abuses you in some way. And they, um, and then you don't deal with it. What you wind up with is a split, a fracture in your personality, you know, based on having, having been fractured early, say in childhood. And what happens is when you don't deal with stuff, as it happens, then those fractures and that delay kicks in. And uh, so you delay in your healing, healing meaning taking it full bore, you know, being completely integrated. And no matter what the world throws at you, you're just one solid person and you take it like that. And I suppose that's... You know, uh, maybe most people are in denial on certain things and fractured this way and that way because of things have happened. I know that uh, with people returning vets, they don't want them to have firearms because they feel that with post-traumatic stress, there's too much, you know, chance they might go off. And it's like, well, fine. Why do you send them there in the first place, especially for useless wars that like we're in? Why do you send them there in the first place? Or why don't you train them better, you know, uh, to, to, to deal with the psychological uh, impact of war? Why don't you tell them and help to prepare them psychologically? Why don't, you know, and the answer is, well, Satan likes a lot of crippled, split people. And most people are split in a certain, you know, traumas have happened that they didn't deal with. And they don't realize it. But there's a whole other part of their personality that can be triggered by people, um, Close to them, say, like a mother or a you know a spouse, or they can say just that one thing that hits that nerve, and then and then they flip into some other kind of mood or some other kind of uh, person, and it's all based on pain and avoidance. So, like when things happen, okay, um, you know, say, say you, and you can't deal with it. Like for example. Um, it was the Bible that really helped to kind of get me to accept that the world was owned by Satan, you know, and that basically there's this other world right next to this one where these people exist and they can only exist on the blood of the lamb, meaning on the sacrifice of innocence. They can't exist um, and sacrifice meaning destroy a person, make them feel bad, you know, whatever. It's, you know, kill them, uh, sacrifice them, uh, get them to commit suicide, whatever. This terrible things that people associate with gang stalking. But there's this terrible reality of evil in the world. And the, the reason the structure can't change is because if you changed it, meaning you brought justice for the blood crying up from the ground of the, you know, the prophets. The Bible talks about the prophets and the saints of old being slain for their faith in Yahweh, their faith in Jesus. Okay, and this has happened from the beginning. In fact, Jesus confronts them and says, you know, you, you people uh, persecute and kill the prophets, then you enshrine them here in the temple. Okay, so there's a lot of attention given to this reality that we have on earth, this spiritual battle. And this spiritual battle is, I would say... Um, Knowing about it is half the battle. In other words, realizing that the, the satanic reality is hidden, the people that belong to it are, are basically remain hidden, and they're not going to say they belong to anything. They're going to claim to be the secular world because it is the secular world. But the secular world cannot exist without the blood of innocence being spilled, without the bloodletting. Just the same as the Mayan culture, the same as this culture, same as Indian culture, same as 
Egyptian culture and so forth. These civilizations have all been built on the blood of the lamb slain from the foundation of the world. So that, you know, the idea is don't ever be a, a Yahweh person or a, a person following the Lord of the truth because you might get hurt. So be in here with us. You'll have protection. And then if you want to go to church, that's fine or whatever. This double-minded, double-standard situation has existed, this double world. And when, you, when a person is innocent, if they don't know about this reality and they're getting hurt by it, they don't understand what's hurting them. And then someone gives them a hint, you know, you need to be on Satan's side or whatever at some point in their lives, you know, while they're broken and they're on their way to, to, to going out. And if they be a pure heart, they, of course, they wouldn't understand that. They would be traumatized by the reality of significant others just hurting them for, for no reason other than to hurt them. I mean, there is a reason for it. It's because that protects them and that boosts them up the ladder. And they believe that also has to do with their sustenance and provision. And, and so you're dealing with common everyday people who are involved in this game while claiming to be uh, religious, non-religious, in any, any stripe or variety in between, claiming to be New Agers, claiming to be all kinds of things. People can claim to be whatever they want, but the reality is, um, it, you know, there's, there's two, two ways. And one way um, has persecution attached to it. And yes, in America, the, the, the true people are persecuted here as they are everywhere else in the world. And... Um, may not be as obvious, but it's uh, because it's kept out of sight. And the other thing is <clears throat> that if you don't participate in the satanic system, then they feel like, okay, we can't trust that person because, I mean, what would they do? They would want retribution at some point for all the bad things that they've done to people, hoping to get away with it, hoping that they're split and, and traumatized and fractured so they can't ever fight back. Because if they ever did fight back, then they're worried about, that's where people get worried about, say, the mass shootings. Although all these mass shootings that you see have been psyops, have been um, by the satanic people. Like that kid that uh, shot the school up, he was a Satanist. So <laughs> there you go, you know. Um, the, what Jesus did for me was basically to make me understand the world that I live in. And help me, in the word of God, help me to be okay with it. In other words, I would contend for the faith. And I would get through it for the faith. And I would allow myself to be hurt for the faith. And I would, you know, uh, not persecute my enemies for Jesus, because that's the instruction. And, uh, you know, b because really, no one is really a direct enemy. I mean, it's nothing personal. You're an enemy, you know, that if you're on... Uh, Jesus' side, if you're a lamb, then you're, you know, naturally an enemy of the world. And so, you know, the world uh, has all its surreptitious ways of getting at you, whether it's poisoning your food, making sure you don't get a job, uh, making sure that you get cut off, putting you on the street, you know, on and on and on and on, whatever kind of thing it is, you know, blocking any career path you might have had, making it so that you can't get through the world and that you will have no career path and you will have no you know, you will be a total loser if you follow the, the truth. And then your faith has to say, I know that Jesus Christ will get me through this and I don't owe anything because that blood paid for me. So I don't owe them legally. Legally, I owe them nothing. And I'm going to stick with that and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stay with my faith knowing that God will get me through it and seek to obey him and not listen to what the world says or other people say or suggestions you know, Job's friends might make or anybody else. In other words, I'm going to contend for the faith, knowing there are risks, knowing, as the Apostle Paul said, um, we are um, lambs to the slaughter all day long, is what he said. And because of what I do, my life is in danger, he said again and again. You know, there's a, there's a price to pay for contending for the gospel again and again. The same people, as I said, from the beginning of time for thousands of years, like I say, they kill the prophets, they kill the saints, they threw the Christians to the lions. In America, they, they have, uh, if you're not a Satanist, basically what they do to you here is they, uh, they block, you know, avenues of 
career advancement, all kinds of things. They block the way. Um, and, you know, I don't know, you know, so many people have blamed themselves, okay? This was my problem. I blame myself. I'd work really hard, got really good grades in school, for example, worked really hard to, to, to get along, to try to fit in and whatnot. And it, I just wasn't getting the same result as someone who didn't work as hard and um, had lesser grades and lesser achievements. And I thought there's a disparity here. And then I noticed that certain people, you know, would be able to get away with all kinds of things, and you know, like politicians, for example. Whereas an average person, if they try any one thing, they get punished. So that there was a a way that these people had, and I studied it for a long time, that they could put off the blame on other people or put the consequences off on other people through their, you know, rituals or whatever, their, for, through their spiritual practices uh, in, uh, in uh, devotion to Satan. And about talking about the Anton LaVey Church of Satan, that's, of course, a joke, as most people know. That's, when I say Satanism, what I mean is, in a sense, secularism, no one dare call it Satan or talk about God, Jesus, Satan, and none of that. It's not that. It's 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 secularized. It's it's a secret system, like a secret society, that that people do what they will, and they don't say anything about it, and it's all done kind of in the open, and you know, it's not with the hooded. There is the hooded reality in the woods and sacrificing of animals and babies and all kinds of things, but. The common day-to-day -day thing is more of a, a connection thing, a, in a, like an emotional connection, a connection with a certain spirit that informs the people what to do and how to do it. And they do what they're going to do, um, and they coalesce their, you know, always for their own advancement. And, and again, they're able to advance. They're, they do bad things to other people. There's no consequences. And, you know, and it seems like then their careers advance and they advance and they do really well. And you and you say to Yahweh, oh, almighty God, why is there not the same justice for them as there is for just regular people that that don't know anything about this? Why is is life so harsh for them? And yet for these people, they seem to be able to even murder people and, and they go up the ladder. And they get more and more power and they play golf and they get big houses and they just seem to, you know, there's it, just nothing really sticks. And how, how does that work? Is you said in your word, Lord, that you said in your word that if you, you were going to reap what you sow. So you got to be careful because you don't want to, you know, reap the whirlwind. You're not going to go do bad things and, and you're going to you know, stay the course and be honest and, 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 um, you know, have good regard for your fellow man and not, not, not go out of your way to hurt anybody, not hurt anyone to get ahead. You're not going to do any of those things because you realize that if you did, you would reap what you sow. Someone would do it to you and you wouldn't advance. But you see them advancing and you're thinking, how is it that they can advance doing maximum evil? You know, we know if you have happened to glimpse it, if you happen to know, you know, the inside story on anybody or anything about how they got ahead. And uh, to a lesser extent, it's the same way throughout the whole world and then throughout all societies. So that, you know, then you get to realize, well, if you're, if you're initiated into Satan's side, you know, if you're in the uh, Lucifer crowd, then basically um, you're a slave. And the only way you can advance is you have to have the approval of the others. There's a collective there. So instead of dealing with one person doing something bad, it's a collective that are also doing their rituals to put it off on other people, scapegoats, whatnot. And, you know, there, there's some kind of protection there of Satan. And that protection of Satan extends to the population that follow him, which is the majority. And uh, who would never say Satanism or Satan or and they would be just like something they would nod or wink about, but they never utter, they never say it. So, so here they are advancing and getting all these perks and, and, and all this stuff, doing bad things in order to please the collective so that they would then, uh, you know, as it says in, in uh, Proverbs 1, you know, share, lay and wait for innocent blood. And the more innocent blood that's spilled, the further you advance. And... 
And, you know, the mark of Cain or the mark of protection seems to be that Satan can offer that protection, that you will not reap consequences for what you've done. Violating, in a sense, God's word. And I've taken, you know, the Lord to task on that. We have big discussions about this. You know, why is it that then, on furthermore, that they will base their societies on the blood of innocence? Like, the Maya was right in your face. I mean, it was their entire society and everything that they had built and every pyramid they had built was based on bloodletting because the bloodletting is what gave them the information from the star people, from the fallen angels or whoever else about advanced technology and, and, and the, the seeds of civilization. But they had to continue doing blood sacrifice in order to get that. Now, in this civilization, just the same as the Maya, what happens is they keep all that out of sight. It may be partial birth abortion. It could be war and also, you know, they could, you know, there are accidents and all kinds of things happen. People get put, people get sick, people get cancer and die. You know, was it spiked? Was their food spiked? Did something happen there? This whole game is roiling on, but there isn't this big pyramid where the, you know, hearts and heads are rolling down, you know, or, or heads, or well, I guess they eat the hearts, so the heads aren't rolling down. So it's not in your face. It's not obvious. It's, 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 it's veiled, but the same system that went on in Egypt, in Greece, and, well, where were there human sacrifices in Greece? Well, human sacrifices, when you look it up, on, you know, and just go through it, you'll see that the, in primitive societies, it's, that bloodletting has always gone on because they want the protection of the gods. Then, as we got into later societies that were more civilized, it was kind of pushed out of sight. So again, it, like here, you'd say America is not involved in human sacrifice. That's ridiculous. And then, but if you look at it from our point of view, you know, the point of view of um, uh, bloodletting in order to get it, because when I look at the architecture of Washington, D.C., it's clear they want to connect with the gods. And that's obviously it's built as a temple, um, you know, and it, you know, and all these pyramids are pointing to Orion and Sirius. And, um, you know, there's a whole mystery about where these, these beings that were here being worshipped and then they went away. But they left humanity with advanced civilization, advanced technology, even laws and things. But there was still the human sacrifice. There were even human sacrifices to Yahweh in the beginning, you know, before, before Jesus. Obviously, there was, you know, it's nothing new here. It's, you know, in other words, it's been covered up so that people remain innocent and they don't realize that, when the, when, when the Bible says the blood of the lamb slain from the foundation of the world, this also means for this world to exist, the blood of the lamb must be shed. In other words, the blood of innocence must be, bloodletting must occur in order for these societies to exist. Slain from the foundation of the world that, in fact, the slain lamb is what made all this possible. So that without the slaying of the lamb or lambs, there could not be civilization. There would not be mathematics. There would not be science, you see. So this is that deep, dark, dirty secret that no one... I mean, that's what it really... That's the real deep, dirty, deep dark, dirty secret of the whole thing. And that we had somehow gone in, in advance of that. But then, like I say, you look at partial birth abortion, war, and, you know, the um, suicides uh, and just misfortunate accidents and other things that happen. And you realize that same system is going on. The quota is being met. That quota is being met. And when things go a little bad, then, you know, people, what do politicians do? They look for being Luciferians, most of them. Not, I'm not saying all of them, but I mean the majority is, and that's, that's the problem that you have here. The majority of people in Europe are Luciferian, and, and the majority of people in Africa are Luciferian. The majority of people in South America, are Luc Russia, China, you name it, it, it. China is a perfect example of a rank and file. That whole military dictatorship system is just completely based on the structure given by the fallen angels for how people should have a structure upon the earth. And... Um, and yes, the underground church there is persecuted, uh, just like here the underground church are just the lambs of God, and they're not organized in churches because the you know people that are the whole purpose of church is to 
is to conform people to the satanic way and control them. It's the purpose of church in America is not to um, liberate people to freedom and have them do their own thing. It's so they can pay, you know, pay their allegiance to their pastor and to their church. And, you know, they can maybe get a referral to a job and bring that tie then and be a part of that system. And basically they're, you know, controlled robots. But, you know, we would know that because if you try to go there, if you're a free spirit, a pure heart, any of these kind of people, a crazy artist, whatever, and you go, you know, in other words, you're not about to be conformed to anybody's way of thinking or, you know, especially not Satanism. So they bait and switch you. They'll tell you, uh, you know, this is all for um, Jesus and they'll teach you the Bible. But then like bloodletting for the society, they want you to be conformed to Satan in order then to be a participant in the Christian world. And when, this is just like the overground church in China. It's approved of and they don't mind if people go to church there in the overground church, just like they don't mind if people, Obama goes to church here. Right? He's a guy that's put himself, blasphemed the Most High God and put himself above the Most High God constantly. And so, and he'll go to church <laughs> and he'll recommend other people do. And uh, you know, he'll listen to Jeremiah Wright telling him of goddamn America and things like that. So, um, you know, it's terrible. I, I know it's terrible, but we've got to get down to the legalities here and what, what, what things mean. And, and uh, so on a personal level, I suppose I've gone through kind of a healing by going back through time, and this is what happened like the last few days, going back through time at night to something uh, when I was triggered by someone's statement. Oh, you thought you were this, or oh, you thought you were that, when you really in earnest were trying to produce something or make something, and they said, oh, you, you thought you were <laughs> doing something. <laughs> yeah, that, that kind of statement um, totally shattered me. You mean all the work I've done is in vain? Yes. All the work you've done, Z, is in vain. You never, you know, you could work really hard, but you're not going to get any credit for it. You know, an idea like this some years ago shattered. I mean, it just, it, it's like that you put 10 or 15 years into something and you were told that it was invalid and that, you know, the, your way is blocked and it will be blocked by these people who say that you must be like us or it's blocked. So that all the work you did was, of course, it was completely in vain and alone and you suffered, but <laughs> we just laugh at you because you're, you're a joke. That kind of thing hurt me so deeply that, and I never dealt with it. You know what I mean? I just ignored that. I heard that. I, I would pretend I didn't hear that. I couldn't have a world, a two-tiered world, you know, where on the one hand you're working hard and they're looking at you as a joke. I, I just can't imagine how cruel and mean that would be and that people would actually uh, assume that's, that's the way it should be and not do something about it. So I take it to the Lord and I'm like, you know, if this is the situation, now there are people who have toiled 20, 30 years only to be told and laughed at that they didn't really count. No one was ever going to take them seriously anyway. They're not allowed. They haven't gotten permission to. Who told you you were a, a this or a that? Who told you you were going to be an artist or this or that? Who told you that? You have to have permission first. And then you do it. Well, that's like the deep, dark days of the Soviet Union. You raise the children. You tell them, you're going to work here. You're going to be a laborer. You're going to be this and you're going to be that, right? That's, that's, the, that's their system. That's completely anathema to all the principles of the United States. So that's enough to flip a person out, that you're invalid um, and you're going to remain invalid until you change and become like us. And the answer is, but for the lambs of God, they're made, it's in their DNA, as we said before. Their DNA is a certain thing. There is no way that they can change I mean, like, I jumped through all the hoops they put before me, but it didn't, you know, it was like bounced off the mirror. You know what I'm saying? 
other people did one or two things they were told and then right through the, to the other side. So it's a DNA thing. Some people are meant for that, some aren't. The wheat and the tares. The, and mark my words, they are all tares. They will all be slain one day by the Lord. It will be like Sodom and Gomorrah. It will be like, a, you know, a nuclear weapon type of thing, you know, that they don't realize. And their seed will be lost and their souls will be lost. And they will not be in the New Jerusalem and they will not be anywhere. Just imagine a pastor who's got a big reputation, who's written a study Bible, being told, depart from me, I never knew you. Just imagine, he would, in other words, he would be told all the work you did, pastor, and the books you published, and all the things you did on the radio are invalid. In other words, the same thing I was told will be told to him, but it won't be told to me. I won't go through the same fate as he. Because you see, I paid the price already. I'm not having the result he's having, but this result he's having is a stopper in the next realm. You say, and the, and the result I'm having is an entry point. It's, it's a welcome mat. And never the twain. I mean, it's just that extreme, folks. It's just that extreme. And we all whistle by the graveyard and kick the can down the road and nod and wink and, you know, it's what they do. But, I mean, we also try to find each other and they laugh at us because they can see who's who and what's what, but we can't. <laughs> and it's uh, and it's terrible. And it's disgusting watching them, you know, give themselves all these awards. And, 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 um, and, you know, even if the work isn't that good, you know what I mean? They, they, they put all these awards on each other and ribbons and medals and, and Oscars and all these kind of things and, and say all these great things about each other and how wonderful they are. And it's just unbelievable watching all this happen. And you go, wait a second, I know something different. Bah, shut up. Your voice doesn't count here. Your work is no good here. Your intentions don't matter here. Whether you love, whether you hate, whether someone hurt you or not, we don't care. We, the majority of the world, do not care about you. And, you know, if you're going to be there as a target, then we will take a shot at you to see if we can traumatize or hurt you in some way just for fun. But then we're going to go back and play pastor and minister and concerned person and concerned parent and and we want our kids to do well and we'll go put that mask on after kicking the crap out of you and then uh oh we can't have people like that because we don't know if they're going to go off i mean if all the things that we did to them they would do any of that to me i would go off so now i'm worried that they might retaliate and this is something that um Someone said about the liberals versus conservatives that the liberals want the guns because if the conservatives ever figured out what the liberals have done to them, they process that, they would retaliate. So take the guns away before they retaliate. That's kind of where it's at. They, they know the guns are to, to go up against the government or whatever in case the government becomes a tyrannical. That's what guns are for. That's what the Second Amendment was for. So they don't want that to happen because they know what they're going to do. And if they, they, they know they want to put people in, human, in chains and they know they want to um, uh, create a kind of a communist type state and they want to confiscate all the guns and put people in compact cities and basically tell them what they can and cannot do. They want to go ahead and ruin people's lives completely. There's already a movement of leftists trying to keep people off state parks or walking around. It's, it's un unbelievable. My views are more like a libertarian. You know, I don't really believe in the Republican form of, uh, you know, big government and big military and attacking people. And I'm, I'm just more like, you know, preserve the borders, um, get off the whole war on drugs thing. I'm, I'm, I'm a lot more lax socially. I'm safe for the abortion issue, which I believe is human sacrifice. And I, I think people are, are, again, whistling by the graveyard on that one, hoping no one finds out that this is like a sacrifice to Molech. It's right out of the Bible. It's just exact, you know. 
especially the partial, the closer they are to birth, the better the conditions are to have a count as something that will contact, give them the elixir they need to contact the power they need to contact the gods, which is the whole point. And I'm rambling a lot. I'm trying to cover a lot of bases here. And it is, it is very coherent if you, if you listen carefully because I'm, you know, I'm doing a kind of a micro macro thing, you know, the individual versus the state versus the, the global civilization. You know, we live in a globe that is, that has been, civilization has been given by the fallen angels, basically. And I know God says, I know there's Romans 13, which I think is a lot of BS. And there's the book of Jude where it says, you know, don't be evil to dignita- dignitaries and things like that. And, you know, basically behave. And uh, the church seizes on those things and gets control of their populations. Like I say, church is simply a conforming mechanism for society. And that's, that's you know, you go there, they'll give you a structure, they'll give you friends, you'll have a, a, a you know, a career path possibly, provided you're conformed to, to the satanic. And, um, the, you know, that's not something they will publicize, but that's that's a prerequisite to being a member of any said given church affiliation. I don't know why that is. You know, imagine my uh, surprise when I, you know, went to one church and I, and I went to all of them in L.A. and they, they, the same requirement for each one. I'm like, really? You would put people out who just wanted the Lord? Yes. We would put people out who just want, that's not good enough. We need people to be participating in society. And, and you know, there is no... Um, you know, we're we're all just sinners. Get off it. Uh, you, you know, like you and and like me, we're all sinners. And and this doesn't is not a deal breaker with God. And you know, it's like it's it's, it's a total deal breaker. What are you talking about? It's complete, total, one hundred percent salvation by Satan. And 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 Jesus just lip service. That's exactly what it is. It's complete, total. I'm going to hell, and I don't care. That's the level it's on spiritually. And yeah, well, find me some place in society that isn't like that. Yeah, any any school, any graduate school, any guild, any any corporation. Find me some place that doesn't have that same thing. We're here to help those lost souls that don't understand this and help them to become productive members of society. Which Z, we're we're trying to would love to do with you as well, <laughs> or put you under our meat grinder and 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 use you to uh, build our coffers. So that's the reality that, you know, and, and I have to tell you, I confess, let me just confess this. I, I have had a really hard time. I suppose it was because in childhood I understood, you know, I saw it from a different level. I saw it from a level of a forced ritual with the children and adults where the mothers were like the PTA observing and, and setting this. I mean, it was insane. It was so. It was beyond Rosemary's Baby, beyond Rosemary's Baby. And it was the norm. This was this was the just the norm of society. This was just business as usual. It was like, oh yeah, well we get this, and then tomorrow we're going to do that, and then we get together and have playtime with the children. We're going to bring in these, and they bring men in to, and they want the children sexualized, and the, the the women, the mothers, simply sit there and observe and watch. Now this is a distinct, um, you know, and I I've. Gosh, I remember it. How could I ever forget something like that? I, I remember I screamed and yelled and got myself kicked out of it. And then the next thing I know, some kid at the uh, day camp that I went to was trying to drown me. It was like, yeah. And then and then and then the the, the woman at the day camp, uh, she's in the pool and all the boys are in the pool, and she tells all the boys to take their trunks off. And um, you know, it was kind of like. You know, this the same thing was going on there in this almost semi-public situation. And I'm like, okay, well, that's pretty blatant, you know. But so for me, though I had seen things like that early on and other things, too, that are even worse than that, that, you know, there's the, there's the you know, the sacrifice and there's the guys getting together with their own. There's the whole thing like that that they want to kind of, they, they, they need you to become okay with it to be, you know, that everyone is to be a slave and kids are supposed to shut up and serve their elders. And, you know, the, you know, and here's the deep, dark, satanic reality and you have to accept it. So you can be a productive member of the family and of society. And those who can't handle it 
uh, wind up usually dead, I guess, or institutionalized. And that's been the deep. Now, I know some of the old timers out there, you're getting, yeah, uh huh. So tell me something I don't know, Z. And it's a, yeah, uh huh. So therefore, what's the next? Like people used to say, well, so what's the next step? Well, the next step is we have to stop it. Uh -huh. And they start laughing. We, we can't. This is something we must petition the Lord about. That this is something that is so evil that the good that people do cannot, it, 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 it taints it and taints all the good works as just being, again, part of that evil corrupt tree that's bearing corrupt fruit. So we need to, you know, either chop the tree down. And of course, when you say that, you mean the end of civilization. You see, any rectifying of this situation would cause Babylon, this is Babylon, to fall. New Babylon, mystery Babylon is simply another, you know, it's like you could say new Babylon or mystery Babylon, either one is fine. It's the second Babylon. It's as it was before, it is again. And just like in the book of Daniel, you'll see Obama lining up perfectly point by point by point. Um, and we're going to get into that uh, more later. But I, this is just really important to, to, to discuss because, you know, it comes holidays and Christmas and different times, you, you tend to become depressed. And I became very depressed yesterday because of all this hurt, all this hurt. It's like, well, I, I can't have a good time, Lord, because I, I'm aware of this whole situation and it really bums me out. And then look at, and then we went over, you know, so-and-so did this, so-and-so did that, and all the attempted, all the harm that was done that, you know, systematically and all the words that were said and the mocking and belittling and, all, all, you know, basically I just went to the Lord. I said, Lord, I've been tortured. I've been tortured all these years because of you, because I belong to you, because you are in me and I've survived because you in me is greater than he in the world. But I have known real persecution from the earliest time of my memories. I have known what it's like to be persecuted as a child without any rhyme or reason. Then their attitude is, well, I've hurt him too much. You've got to go ahead and institutionalize him because he might fight back. So you can't have that. It becomes like Herod killing all the two-year-olds, right? And, you know, I've seen how evil the world is from a very early age. And I, you know, and naturally, through fragmentation, post-traumatic stress disorder, things like that, I compartmentalized all these things because I couldn't handle, no child can handle knowing that's the way it is. I mean, come on. And then the explanation would have to be, which will never come and they'll never teach in school because you'd have to admit there's a Satan and there's a God. You'd have to admit the things they don't want to admit. You'd have to admit that all civilization came from, you know, the structure that we have came from you know, inspiration by God on the one hand, sure, but basically the structure we have is from the fallen angels. And then you can get into the corruption of the DNA from the fallen angels. And so it's corrupt at the, at the gene level, at the DNA level. It's corrupt at the society level. Each human being is corrupt, but because they have a collective and they're able to put a good face on it, they can appear to be squeaky clean and good, reasonable people until you get one of them away from their collective for too long, and then they start freaking out. And that's when you can actually see the man or woman for what they really are. You know, flawed, broken, uh, multiple personalities. Obviously, most, most of the demonized people are. And whenever you conform to Satan, then you receive a demonic spirit. That is your control mechanism, and that keeps you in line. Uh, through fear and sometimes through greed, you're kept on a path and people stay on that path to the end. 
and then what happens to them? They burn. What do you think happens? They perish. They're fini. They're like the rich man and Lazarus. You know, the rich man, you know, burns in hell, right? I mean, you know, the burning in hell could be a metaphor. I, You know, the, it's almost like, but no one's conscious of them in real reality. Say, if you are the new Jerusalem, are there any, is there anyone in, burning in hell? No. There isn't. Is there anyone somewhere else besides that? No, that's the only reality that exists. The new Jerusalem, the new heaven and new earth, etc., is is all there is. There is no other place. Well, what about that Michael chained Satan down in the pit forever and ever? There's no awareness that the Bible, this history, there's no history that ever took place at that point. You know, so so a Satanist could make the point, well, since that's the way it is, who cares? You know, energy is just energy. It transforms and like, I'll do my thing here as a human being and then, then my energy goes off into the trees and the woods and whatnot. Nothing ever really dies. And so, you know, my, my in, in, you know I'm going to do what I can now because there is nothing after. And the, the people in Christ say, no, there is something after. And people who have read the book of Daniel realize that there is a uh, reward and punishment after. But then after that, is there a cognizance of, you know, in a sense, what the Lord is doing is bringing up his people. For some reason, he must put his people, a minority, through this horrible world. And and it is a, it, it is a um, horrible from the standpoint of what goes on behind the scenes to make the society work. On the surface, it can look wonderful. I mean, I, and, and, and naturally... I love nature. So, I mean, that's wonderful. So, you, you know, but what I mean horrible, I mean our civilization. When I say world now, I mean civilization. And there's no difference between Eastern, Western, ancient, modern civilization. They're all, they've all been the same. One could argue that we needed the fallen angels. To, to have a structure like we have here, you would need the fallen angels to have autonomy and Satan to be protected by God. So like Cain, Satan is protected by God, number one. So there is protection there for the Satanist that if you make a deal with the devil, you get you know your life with hands off from Yahweh and hands off from retribution. And you also do not exactly, you, you know, people reap what you, they sow, sort of, but it's in, in, the, in the mass sense of, of the word, no, they don't. So these politicians that are other criminals, you would have already seen them arrested and hauled up. You won't see that. They got away with it. And they get away with it every time. And no one to stop them because they have protection. And you'll even see people, you know, they're in the same societies like this Boehner guy bowing down. Now, he, they might kick him out, but this is all part of a temple ritual of his initiation into uh, a certain, you know, inner sanctum of, of the temple. And he can't, you know, he has to publicly humiliate himself as part of the initiation process to get in. And um, that's what I think is going on. I think it's, it's I, I don't think there's anything that goes on that isn't spiritual and isn't structured in a very specific way. Because the fallen angels, the watchers are very structured and very specific about rules, rank, structure, you know, rituals. Etc. It's 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 very very scientific. So, and then, you know, I suppose the rest of the people were supposed to just kind of go along and 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 re repeat what they saw the elites doing on their own level, and it sort of repeats all the way down to the lowest common denominator. And I suppose the only people that are really off the hook are the bums on the street and the crippled people and the retarded people. And, you know, so for every Olympic gold medal winner, for every Academy Award winner, for every uh, Medal of Honor winner, notice all these stupid medals. If you were to look at this from another planet, another civilization, you go, what do they give each other those things for? It's um, for, every, for everything like that that's awarded, there's a million lambs slaughtered. So you see, if you see both cause and effect, you tend to, and I, I may be kind of exaggerating to make a point here, but I mean, 
blood has to spill so that shiny metal can be garnered. That sort of makes it so, yuck, I don't want one of those. Everything good that happens here is basically based on the blood of innocence somewhere else. And they will tell you, but this is the 3D world. This is the world you live in. It's been that way for thousands and thousands of years, and you're not going to stop it. It's just nobody can stop it. And so, yeah, if you're going to, you know, take up with Jesus for real, which nobody does, um, then, you know, uh, you have only yourself to blame for what we do to you. Sabotage your car, poison your food, block your uh, career, do anything we can to put maximum misery on you so you, you know, kill yourself, which would be the ideal goal of polite wonderful, democratic society. It's beyond Rosemary's Baby in terms of horror. It's beyond the beyond in terms of tr what the truth really means. Um, th th it, there is no argument against it because... You ask anyone who's been around, they'll tell you the same thing I told you. I mean, they may worry that there'll be retribution on them. Most people that would tell you are in it themselves, but they will say, yep, can't fight it. When in Rome, God understands. And I'm here to say, no, 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 no. The Lord is just waiting to slay them all. He, if he... This, all this talk about love everybody is total BS. The Lord doesn't love everybody. If the Lord loved everybody, there'd be no Revelation 18 and 19, which is, let me just recap that, uh, and, uh, you know, or, and, and the breaking open of the seals. Well, let's just recap all this. The fifth seal, the, the saints are slain, and they're saying to the Lord, how long before you avenge us, Lord? How long, how long? And the answer is, for this civilization to exist, all these civilizations, the lamb had to be slain from the foundation of the world. So the saints are overcome. And what happens in seal six? What happens in seal six? They hide from the wrath, what? What's it called? The wrath of the lamb. Wrath against who? The people who slay the lambs. God hates them. But here's the thing. If it were over, what, the moment it's overturned, you have mass death and the end of the civilization anyway. It's, it's the wrap up. If at any time on the timeline it had been overturned, that would have been the end of civilization at that point. So we wait until the end when it's flipped, but justice cannot come and will not come. Not really. Not, not, not. Um, objectively for all conscious beings to know and know in their hearts and realize justice has been served. Justice would require the um, extermination of this entire civilization. There would be no justice without that, technically, um, because of the spiritual issues, not you know, the, what was published in the New York Times. Because of the blood, the real blood, the real, the real victims. Because for that blood to be avenged, that's crying up from the ground, the blood of innocence to make these civilizations happen. At least the Maya were right out front with it, you know. And they had the most advanced civilization of anyone, really. And um, they were just, everything was out in the open with them. Uh, but without um, this system remaining in place, then God's people couldn't really go through here because they're, there wouldn't be a here to go through. And so that's what you're dealing with. And, and you know, it begs questions. So, therefore, when you, th when you say justice, what do we mean? Uh, justice is God will avenge the blood of the lamb slain from the foundation of the world. And to do that uh, will involve the death 
of most of the world's population. And it doesn't matter whether they know anything about this or not. It doesn't matter. It's a legal issue. It's, it's really more of a legal issue, in a sense. Uh, it's, a, it's not a moral issue for God because God is moral. There is no amoral with God. So it's not really even, it's more just like, it's a structural legal issue. And it is also, um, you know, logical. So that's right. So, so Jesus is the son of God. His blood is shed so that these people might be acquitted. That they would be saved. Saved from what? Saved from the wrath of the Lamb. Saved from the judgment that's coming that will put down the world. Saved from the judgment that's coming that will end civilization. Saved that the judgment that's coming that will extinct the human race, whatever. That they will take the forgiveness through the blood that the, the, the price they couldn't pay. God basically killing himself to shed the blood so that that blood could be appropriated to the believers of the Lord, of Jesus, so that they legally can have the covering of Christ and legal, have the legal covering so that um, when justice comes, they're removed and taken out. And that's, I think, where the whole rapture theory comes, that this judgment is not for God's people because they're covered in that way. Uh, but it's kind of like a game of musical chairs. If you, you know, it's, it's like, it's, it's meant for those who have a predetermined DNA that belongs to the fallen angels. If there's a God gene in a person, then even if you, the fallen angels say you belong to them, then you're changed by Jesus, changed by your belief that DNA activated and you're on the path of Christ. But it would have had to, a predisposition for Christ would have had to have been there, written in, in the, they call that the Lamb's Book of Life, which is the code of DNA. So I don't want to get into all the technical, you know, mumbo jumbo about that. But again, when the Bible says the Lord doesn't lose any that are his, that is literally 100% true. Now, how could that happen? That the Lord doesn't lose any that are his. And the Lord has never lost one that are his in all the generations that have lived and died. The Lord has gotten exactly those who he knew were his and he got them. And he knows exactly at every given moment those who are his and he guides them. And he gets them every time. Whether And yes, many are prodigals who are, reject God and think they're Satanists and all kinds of things. <clears throat> but um, somewhere along the line, he gets those. He gets all his prodigals. He gets everybody as it's timed for them to to do whatever it is they're going to do. And that is, you know, does give me some gratification. In other words, I'm very pleased. So what could we say about the others? Robots? Hybrids? And the answer would be yes. If they're not in the last book of life, then they're hybrids of some kind. That's an awful lot of hybrids. The religion based on... And how could the fallen angels have the power to make people let blood like that? It's because they own them. They own the Maya. They own... And the Maya thinks that they are the progenitors. That they wouldn't even be there unless it was for those fallen angels. In a sense, they wouldn't be in the way they were because they intervened genetically a long time ago. As it was before with the days of Noah, with the flood because of the DNA manipulation and corruption, it is again for the exact same reason. So, uh, but now this thing about justice. Justice has to do mainly with the lamb slain from the foundation of the world. That's justice for, you know, the prophets, the saints, the people of Yahweh, the people of God, the creator, and his people who have been harmed because the other side, you know, the fallen angels, the watchers, Satan, whatever, the other side knows those are for, that's the enemy of them. Okay? So they target those. You target an individual. They target these because they're the enemy. Anything that is of Yahweh is the enemy. Anything written in the Lamb's Book of Life would be the enemy of these people. And they'll do anything they can, including try to corrupt the whole human genome. Yeah, if it's through a microchip that has a nanotechnology in it that gets loose in your body, once it's implanted, so be it. But 
you know, however, and there's other ways of you know, contaminating food, whatnot, to try to corrupt the genome, to make it not what God created. So that the Lord has no purpose in being here whatsoever. He's lost all of his. And, and yet we hear that the Lord says, I don't lose even one that are mine. I know every hair on your head and I've never lost one, not one soul that belonged to God before the foundation of the world, before they were even born. Not one soul of these were lost. The Lord never loses any, and he doesn't sit there lamenting if only they would come and all that. He, there is no, there's no need for him to do that because he already knows those who are his and they're already protected and they're already going to be with him in the end. And so there is no drama that maybe they won't. There is no chance, according to the way that I reckon the word, there is no chance that they won't be with God because God is omnipotent, omnipotent, omniscient and omnipresent and he is the almighty God. And if he says you're one of his, that's it. I guarantee you he will not uh, fail. He, because he never does fail. He never has failed and he never will fail at anything that he does ever. So there's no need for God to be like you or me and lament, oh gee, I wish I had done it this way or gosh, I wish I had done that. No, it's perfect. Every, so I, I've got to take heart with that and take faith in the perfection of God, that he will balance the scales at the proper time. And it is correct for the saints of the Lord to be going, how long, how long, O oh Lord, are you going to let this go on before, you know, that there'll be nothing left? And, you know, so, so many evil people and so few of your years were being slain every day and set up and lied about it. And, and if they're not, if that's not happening, they're tortured and, and harmed. And they feel bad and they blame themselves. And how long, Lord, how long, how long are they going to suffer? How long are you going to let us suffer, Lord? And the answer is um, until the end of days, until the time appointed. And uh, because the system could not exist, Mystery Babylon could not exist without uh, bloodletting. I'm sorry. And without the blood of the lambs, I'm sorry. It's just the way it is. And if you got rid of that practice, even for a day, the civilization would collapse because it's based on the bloodletting. There's nothing else I can say about it. It's exactly what happened with the Maya. But well, what happened with the Maya was something else. The no, the rituals used to work. Then suddenly it got to a point where no matter how much blood they spilled, nothing changed and there was no communication with the gods. You know, everything ceased. So they started, so they doubled down on it. They said, well, then we'll sacrifice more people to get back in the good favor with you guys. So they did more and nothing changed. And they did more and nothing changed. And then what happened? One day they left and they left. And I, I know the people say, oh, we don't know why the Maya left. Yes, let me explain it to you. The Maya left because their rituals no longer worked. Period. Otherwise, they would have stayed there. Period. Okay, so what happens in America if the satanic rituals don't work anymore? Or the world? What happens if no matter how many people they kill, no matter war, you know, and, and no matter how big the war gets against the saints of God, no matter how much evil that they do, no matter how many rituals they do, nothing changes and they keep going down, then I would say that, that along the line, there will be a mass exodus from the civilization and it will collapse. It will be a ghost town. All of America would be a ghost town if the ritual didn't work and we're seeing how it's not working so they need more blood which is why they're going to keep going for a world war in the Middle East and all that because they're, they, they, they have an insatiable appetite they can't have it slow down they can't have the ritual stop working because they exist because of the ritual they breathe because of the ritual
And that is the sick, sad, interdependent situation with the dragon and humanity. And unfortunately, um, the only thing that, that, that they will do when the ritual stops, and I'm here to say, you know, no more lambs. You know, again, you know, reiterate that, that um, well, just the population has gone down to uh, when God said no more lambs, it wasn't so much that don't touch them. It was more like, I'm going to take them out of here. The Lord will move his people out of harm's way before this flip of the, of the switch. Um, I don't know how what mechanism that is, but in, in a sense, if you want to call that the rapture, that's fine. We agree in that, on that point, that, that on this one technical point, that the Lord will move his children out of the way in, in some fashion, but we're not sure what form that will take. Okay, then I could sort of contradict myself and stipulate that yes that will happen the Lord will protect his own will it be 100% I don't know I don't think so um, you know we don't have a collective salvation we're not going to have a collective harpazo uh, you know catching away it's, um, it's, it's, it's strange you know it's not easily put into a box but in general I would agree with you and that's the important thing in general you have the Lord's you know the the punish the thing that's happening here is not meant for his lambs and you can see that obviously so they will be moved out of the way. There's the issue of first fruits. We we went over this last night. We went over everything. Oh gosh. And uh, my question was: Are there 144,000 first fruits? That will follow the Lamb wherever he goes. You know, Revelation 7 and 14. We'll follow the Lamb wherever he goes, and they'll sing a song that, that they know, that you know, they'll, have, they'll be tuned to a certain frequency. And they uh, it doesn't mean they're following him around the clouds. It just means they're kind of like interdimensional beings, sort of like angelic in a way, and they have autonomy. You know, they're sort of a preview of what's to come for everyone else. So will they, um, are there that many here? Because I'm actually thinking, you know, maybe what the what the rapture is is just through attrition over time, the saints are just moved out of the way, just naturally. So it doesn't. There's not this great right, and and uh, and then let the games begin. They'll slaughter each other off. That's what will end up happening, without God or the saints being anywhere even near, because they won't have the sacrifice anymore. Uh, that gets them through. That gives you a whole other perspective when you hear about Daniel and the sacrifice, the word sacrifice used in the book of Daniel about stopping the sacrifice and the, or they restart the sacrifice, which means the temple sacrifice. But I mean, looked at on a deeper level, what is the temple sacrifice but a metaphor of the slaying of the lambs, yes? Isn't that what it is? More or less, structurally, isn't the temple ritual simply a metaphor? And isn't ritual in and of itself simply metaphor? Doesn't magic, when they do something inside the pentagram, doesn't that stand for something outside? It's a metaphor, isn't it? Okay. So, so in other words, these rituals are metaphors to create something in nature that's favorable to the, to, to the people. And when that stops, civilization collapses. And I'm here to tell you that it will stop and civilization will collapse and, and to, to know that your salvation draweth nigh, watch when no matter what they do, there's no solution. No matter who's in power, there's no, no solution. And also watch how they, they manifest it by creating wars to jump into. So back to the traumas. So I went over just about every bad thing anyone ever said, you know, that would show that there's two worlds. The thing that would trigger me is like when there was evidence that there's a satanic world. I was to the point where I didn't want to see it. I didn't want to know it. And I just, I believed it didn't exist. I had actually gotten all the way to the point where I didn't think anything like what I just described in this talk today, that anything like this existed. But if anything threatened that knowledge with a little, some kind of statement or some kind of triggering word about that there is something else going on, I flipped out. I mean, I just got white with fear. 
I had to run home. I had to go somewhere. I had to hide. Because I, 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 my, my reality, nothing like that could be. Nothing like that could be. And, you know, part of it was just being damaged early as a child and, and you know, then going into denial. And, and you know, then, then when people would violate that denial, they became the enemy. They, they would trigger me into realizing that the world is run by a set of rules, uh, by a set of people that have been here thousands of years. And um, they have a pretty much an ironclad grip, but they don't have a grip on the true saints of God. And that drives them insane. We went through every person, many who had posed themselves as brethren to me, um, made statements that showed they weren't brethren. You know what I mean? That indicated they were not one of us. That showed us that they knew about something else. And um, we've, we've, you know, it doesn't mean I reject them, I hate them, I, I pray, you know, for people. There's a lot of prodigals, like I say, who were there, but I mean, they defend it, meaning, you know, you, you, you were barred from a career. Like, that's not what you're supposed to do. Or some kind of statement like that. And I would know, then that means that this person is affiliated with the other side, with Satan, and, 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 and supports the structure of career advancement that is laid out before uh, these um, um, initiates these beholden and belonging to through a contract to Satan. And so the person making a statement such as that would, and then saying they're a, a lamb or a Christian or whatever, they'd be like, well, that's not true because that's not true. You know, um, it's just as black and white as that. And when, when, you know, when, when people would violate the mask that they have on in the masquerade, it would really upset me. I'd, I'd be like, well, I go into denial and I would pretend I didn't hear it to myself and convince myself nothing like that was said, even though it's triggering me on a bunch of levels that are, um, you know, a demonic attack and so forth. It's triggering me on a bunch of levels and um, I realize I'm losing control and I realize I'm, um, you know, myself now being handled by the enemy. And I have to break out of that. And uh, so it's this ongoing struggle not to be handled, this struggle not to have friends who will make statements like that. You know, like... Um, like people I had met earlier where they say, well, you know, so none of your work counted. You never did, you know, and, and saying it matter of fact like that shows me that they, their affiliation is still with the world and they're not one of us, even if why they're around, I don't know, probably as, as a handler. I, I don't know. I don't know. But you can't have both in the same vessel. You can't have someone saying nothing you do, do matters because that's the rules, not knowing the rules. And for me to have found out all the rules, it took many years. And then, you know, just assuming it and then saying they're a lamb on the other hand. No, the lamb would say, um, you know, gosh, you, you know, you, you, you really worked hard. That was like a lot of, years of dedicated work. I mean, you know, it, it, it didn't work out because you really belong to God, but it's cool. You know, you're a completely emancipated adult being and I accept you and love you as my brother and I love you as my, my you know, brother, my sister, my whatever. And, you know, we're just in the same thing. We're contending for the faith and this is just persecution. It's all good. It's all cool. We all understand. And it's the right way to be. It's the way that it was supposed to be, the way it was intended to be, and all is right with the world. See, that's what I expect when I get something different than that. 
a slip here or there. In the past, it would trigger me into silence. See what I mean? And there was like a, and then I would immediately become self-destructive. In other words, it set off a self-destructive thing of, um, which would immediately start punishing me for uh, being me and or who I am in Christ, in God. Uh, the other form of uh, punishment is we're all one, we're all the same, love each other, blah, blah, blah. So there's no difference between me and these perceptions, the church, the this, the that, the politicians. We're to love each other, love everybody, you know. That is another tactic. And when I hear that, I think that I also, in the past, have been triggered by that. Um, that's that faux Jesus stuff that I hate. That I hate, the, I hate these people. I just, seriously. Well, you know, I hate them, not meaning personally hate them, but I mean, I hate, well, let's just put it this way, I hate what they do. I don't know them personally. I wouldn't want to know them personally. Love everybody, you know, imitate Christ. Someone on my page said that the other day. It was like, not one of these. Oh, please. Uh, but it didn't trigger me. Usually it would trigger me into becoming, yes, self-destructive. Right. That's always what would happen. And, and then I would miss it. And then the, the delay would be you know, a couple of years before I remembered that statement. See what I mean? There'd be a delay in wholeness. In other words, that delay indicates a split in the personality. If there's a delay, that, that's post-traumatic stress disorder. And, you know, in other words, the, the fragment of you just got traumatized and now you're not going to deal with that. So there's a delay and a trauma and a split that just happened. And then you keep trying to go on, but you can't do that. Eventually, you're going to have to pull those splits back in. The Lord has to heal us because that he is whole. He is healing. If he's inside you, you're going to be healed. So we had to look at all those statements that went back a long time and all the people in the so-called Christians who've made all these statements and all the new agers who made statements and all the secular people that made statements and all the triggering that's taken place and all the stuff in the long, torturous, awful time it's been. And trying to, you know, face each thing that, yes, that happened. Yes, they said that. Yes, they did that. Yes, they, they wanted to kill you. Yes, they put something in your food. Yes, they, yes, they did this, and yes, they did that. Because that was also hard to catch. Just the idea of someone spiking your food, uh, the, the idea of something like that happening, I, I, I couldn't have that in my mind. And... Uh, you know, it goes on from there. And I, you know, in each one of these incidents, having a uh, trusted, respected, significant other feed you poison or betray you and have this betrayal going on since five, I realized I was very damaged from all the lying and betrayal that had gone on simply because of this issue with Jesus and Satan, simply because of this global issue with civilization and society, simply because of this situation of truth described in the Bible that Bible teachers don't teach, because the real truth of the Bible is not taught in this world. What is it really saying is not taught. Because it's holographic and alive, you have to be very careful when you approach it, too. I said the other day that, you know, a little housekeeping issue that uh, the words would change. And um, it's not in your understanding, my friend, and my understanding. It's more like it changes, but it's like it didn't change. For example, there are people taken out of here. They're taken out of here, and you don't have any further memory of ever having met them. Sometimes you'll have a deja vu like you met somebody, but... You can't be sure about it. But the, but the bottom line is, reality gets altered like that. The Bible gets altered like that. So we would never be able to detect the words will still look the same to us, even though, the, let me put the real answer. The words look the same to us, although they seem to mean something different. Even though the words were changed in the Bible in some way, they look the same identical to us as what we saw yesterday. How this is possible, 
I don't know. I've, I've caught it on a couple of occasions. It has never eradicated Romans 13, though. It's never eradicated Jude 1. Uh, and anywhere else where it tells you to obey. <laughs> I mean, all governments are given by God. You have got to be kidding me. No government on this earth is given by God, pretty much. God is not the God of bloodletting and, um, uh, you know, copying in, in a symbolic way, but then hiding the real nitty gritty stuff, the Maya and other civilizations in cahoots with the fallen angels. It's not God that gave that government. It's the fallen angels that gave that government. And, and, and that give rise to the ritual being part of the Jezebel game on earth. Uh, they're the ones that set that structure up and they, and they are in, yes, they're in, they're right. It's the hidden matriarchy yeah, that, that they are completely, completely, um, governments are completely given over to that. So when it says all governments are given by God, so I better obey. And then you have the, uh, the feds going into these churches, reminding the pastors to obey those scriptures, which Adolf Hitler did the very same thing. You know, it was plagiarized. I mean, that's the only way I can put it. So even though some how meanings are changing, the plagiarized parts don't seem to get eradicated. So I can't say the Bible's changing all that much. But just when I encountered Daniel the last few times, it was definitely progressive and not a return. And I, and I don't understand. I'm also part of it as well. You know, everything is a part of it. Just like God can take people out of here and then they, they were as if they never were, that you don't have any memory of them ever having been here. And he can put people in where you think they've always been here, but they haven't been. You know, that kind of thing is going on all the time too. You know, not just the books changing. So it's a very fluid dynamic here, folks. Very fluid situation. And God is in control. And you can just take that to the bank and never worry because... One of these days, before there is an end to civilization, there must be a degrading of it. They must have their noses rubbed in it. And when they see you healthy and healed and having forgiven, like I've forgiven them. You know, you know, in order to forgive, though, I had to look at what happened. And then it was like, yeah, I can understand through compassion that if I were you, I would do the same thing to me. So I can forgive. I understand. It doesn't mean I welcome you. Um, I'm going to treat you well. I'm going to treat you, uh, you know, my neighbor as myself, no matter what your affiliation is. But at the same time, I don't let you in because I know who you are and I know what you'll do. And you want in desperately, which means that I have to walk circumspectly and I have to always be wary of people that want my attention or company because I'm uh, never sure that there won't be some other thing getting started up and there's been plenty and some were very deadly and thank God uh, we woke up. And now I'm just trying to like not get sucked in the first place and that's not, it's a lot easier said than done and anybody that talks publicly about these kinds of things will be somewhat of a target in that way. They will try to you know, anyway, I never put myself out there as being good. You know, I've gotten drunk, I've fallen down, I smoked, and I'm smoking intermittently, and I cuss, I've been selfish, I've been a lot of bad things. You know, <laughs> but at the end of the day, there's been some virtuous thing I've done too, and that is... I've just made for this. I, I don't even know what it is. It just, you know, it, it doesn't change in me. It's not like I'm going back and forth. You know, it just doesn't change. It's like been super consistent there. And then I tell the Lord, I say, I'm sorry for my sins of the flesh. I really am. You know, and I'm working on those. And you haven't heard as much cussing lately, right? I, I felt bad about that. And, you know, I, well, how did I get such a potty mouth? You know, and I, I realized, you know, Probably with me, it's because I don't have any to put on airs like churches do. You know, I don't have to, you know, we could talk about these things without having to put on this whole so holy atmosphere. And um, I guess that was part of it, you know. 
The other part is I'm rough around the edges because it, it was just a long time of pain, torture, suffering, and a lot of that kind of stuff of, 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 a, of a psychological and spiritual nature because of this battle. And I, I guess I would selfishly think that I'm the only one that's really suffering, so I have the right to say whatever I want. And I'm, I'm sorry for being childish in that way. I know I have been. And I know that uh, there's been great suffering far, far beyond. Uh, well, no, not because if it was beyond anything I'd had, I'd be dead. So I guess I've had the suffering that everybody gets. And, you know, my heart goes out to you. I've, I've, I'm sorry that you've suffered too. And I know I get emails from people that say, well, no matter what you say, Z, why can't you help me? I got implants, you know, and they're targeting me. And it's like, I, I just can pray over you. I, you know, the implant, I probably have them too. You know, I, there's the whole weird aspect of all this that we're not even addressing yet. You know, but I know one thing. You come into this world and you get targeted for no good reason. There is a reason. You know, and so there are people that are, for no good reason are being followed and laughed at, you know, gaslighted in the street and, 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 and imitated and mocked and, um, you know, surveilled and, and, you know, that has got to be a terrible reality. I think what happened to me is I, it may go on. I just, I just ignore it, I guess. You know, I became dull to it all. It was like such a common thing. Um, you know, you have to understand that the all-seeing eye in, in the world, you know, Lucifer, the all-seeing eye, tracks every soul, theirs, ours, everybody's. 24 hours a day. So they know who is, you know, with them and they know who isn't. So obviously most of these targeted individuals, they're not Satanists and they don't intend to become that. And they're not going to be relied, they're not part of Satan's army and they're not going to be relied upon. Um, and so they're outsiders. So they're a threat in some way. And, and, and so, yeah, they'll turn up the, uh, the microwaves and the, um, you know, surveillance, the electronic surveillance and, and whatever. I've, I've just kind of let it all hang out on Google and Google Mail and, you know, public, um, all my sites are semi-public like SoundCloud and Re Reverb Nation, Podbean, all those. I opted for all those rather than having a web designer try to, you know, do all that. And it's been, a, you know, I think a pretty good strategy, you know, using social networking for that, uh, for, for, for getting the word out, using the very excellent podcast that was invented back in, you know, the early part of this uh, century, you know, uh, just about 2003, 2004, in came the podcast. To me, that beats being on the air. That beats, um, you know, live, but that beats live radio. The, the, the pod is transferable, transportable. Um, it, it never goes away. They're out there somewhere. Um, people all over the world hear them and you can't beat it. It's just, it's just an amazing thing. And, and so I think what we all ought to be doing is really focusing on the highest. No, I understand the need for some live radio and stuff. I know that, uh, our friend Kunita is out there. He's, he's got a live, uh, I don't know the time. I think it's on Sunday, a live, uh, talk show on blog talk radio. So I know there's a need for that and for need for live prayer. And, and I think that has its place. But for me, it's been this, this medium has been the one that I embraced, the one I was shown, you know, would work. And what are we doing here? We're enlightening people as to what and teaching people as to what this whole thing is all about. It's we're not really I'm not really sharing opinions with you. I'm just, you know, putting to the best of my knowledge what I believe are facts on the table about this issue and trying to talk about it in a way that doesn't make me sound weird or like a conspiracy theorist or whatever. Um, there's nothing new here. Um, but enough people have reacted to, to me in such a way that I believe they're proud and bold about their rank in Lucifer's system. And they speak about it all the time out of school, out of turn in front of me, you know, to, 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 to try to make me feel upset that there's this other world going on that I don't know anything about, that kind of thing. And, um, you know, to, to, to try to jar me. And it doesn't really work. I'm, I'm well aware, but, but see, it's happened so many times. 
And that's how I finally mapped out their world and then finally traced it to uh, the pyramids, <laughs> to the thousands of pyramids worldwide that represented civilizations that have come and gone upon the earth. And when I did my artwork back in the 90s, I did this painting with a pyramid and then uh, these souls floating in space, you know, like white light beings of light, with their umbilical cords going to the pyramid. And it's like, wow, you know, and then some also automatic kind of writing, backwards question mark or upside down question marks, backwards threes, sevens with a line through, uh, going backwards and with two lines under the, under the uh, just beneath the uh, cross stem of the, of the seven. And other things like that, you know, were kind of laid in there, almost like hieroglyphics. And uh, eventually I got rid of it. I mean, it disturbed me. I, that's why I don't have it up on the wall. It disturbed me. It's not something I want to hang on the wall. I also did a picture once of an alien that it was so scary because, it, you know, I had gotten the alien came into the house and, you know, the, the ships were bothering us. And, you know, and, and those eyes were looking at me. It's the same thing that people feel this paralyzing fear to the depths of a, a depth that they didn't even know they had, which means you already have a familiarity with those little robots. They already know you. You already know them, but you're not aware of, of what the connection is. Otherwise, they wouldn't be, it would be something different that you'd seen and that the eyes wouldn't be able to trigger you to this deep, deep fear trigger that was put in by them somehow, probably with DNA but designed to get us to obey and comply and be frozen in their presence. Otherwise, how could a three and a half foot tall being carry you anywhere, right? They'd have to have some way of controlling your mind. No, well, that's not natural, is it? That's not something that in God's word explains how to deal with, probably due to editing, who knows? No, I mean, you know, is the, is the Bible the infallible word of God? No, it's, it's, it's fallible, you know? It's fallible. Um, the whole Bible is fallible in the hands of the wrong person. The Bible is at best Rima when handled correctly in the hands of the right person. And it's not talking about the context of the time in which it was given historically. It's elevating to the level of Rima that is a message for you from God by using the medium of the Bible. And... Um, you know, that's very rare. Most of these pastors, they, they, they put it in, you know, they want to, you know, especially evangelical ones, they want to talk about context and history as a comparison to some obvious thing today in society. And they gloss over this part that we're talking about here today. By glossing over this part means they're liars. By glossing over this part means they cannot minister to the people. The people will remain their slaves. So... I don't, I have disdain for them because it's sort of like in the, you know, where Jesus is, is addressing the, the churches of Asia and those are meant for the churches of Asia and that's what John was writing about. He wasn't addressing the churches today, but that the, the church where Satan and Jezebel are is the church today, worldwide, whether it's Catholics, Protestants, it doesn't matter, it's worldwide the same, the same grip of control. And um, he says, you know, you people either repent. And eventually in, in Revelation 18, when it says, come out of her, my people, and be separate. And it says, be separate in the Old Testament. But I mean, the New Testament is come out of her. Um, the reason it's saying that is because, uh, in a, in, you know, you got to look at it, you know, in this way, that, that the Babylonian system was a religious system. So the mystery Babylon would be what? The church of Jesus on the outside, but mystery Babylon controlled on the inside. And yet the true faith of Jesus would be going on as a mystery, a la Psalm 91. So we have a, an incredible um, you know, two-tiered thing going on there. We have the outer false thing called church, and then we have this inner sanctum of truth that's hidden from the church yet yet it's in the center of the body of Christ that that guides as a church and guides people through the situation which is innately hostile toward 
anyone who rejects Satan's offer of salvation. Meaning, go along with us and, and we'll make sure you have a career path and a life and you know, you'll have a structure and a wife and kids and you'll have a shot. Um, I'm just so thoroughly disgusted by that and by people that would actually attempt to wield that sort of power that I would throw up on them if I saw them. And, and with glee. Because I, I tell you, there is no place for a, a human being like that in this world. If we revere goodness, honesty, integrity, you know, children, and so forth, a little bit of that leaven would leaven the whole lump. The whole thing would go corrupt. People like that should not be allowed to walk around on this planet. They should be held, um, you, know, you know, they should be chained like Satan in the pit. Um, they shouldn't be school superintendents, pastors, uh, corporate uh, CEOs, or anything else. They should not be in the positions to set policy in the government. And they should, they should be nowhere. I mean, this is like the psychopaths, right? They should be nowhere in society because they have no guilt. They have, they're, they have ruthless ambition. And they don't, you know, they, they just want to control people. And, it, it's, it's, and they want to control them and deliver souls to, to, to the evil Lord, Lord Satan, who promises people redemption um, if they go along with him, meaning that they, 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 they will be rewarded in this life. And they won't have to wait till Jesus makes it okay later. And, uh, you know, there's a movement now to reject all those forms of theory, but you can't get away from it because there's no difference between the gods, the architecture, the life on the ground, the corporation. It's all intertwined. You know, modern man has tried to secularize it in a way to hide the truth about all that. You know, and and the, and the public's kind of gone along with it. You know, they're they're like, see no evil, hear no evil. They don't believe that they're doing anything wrong. They don't believe that they're affiliated with Satan. They don't believe that they are structurally um, useful idiots. They don't believe that they've given power to the beast. They don't believe that they're causing the destruction of their civilization. They just think they're doing whatever they have to do to have a job and have money and put food on the table. That's all they're thinking. And. And, and they are not thinking for one second uh, of, of, of jeopardizing it or that God may have a problem with it. They don't think that at all. Someone like me is just a, an utter quack for even suggesting it and out of my mind. And out of my, uh, and out of my mind. And the thing is, is no, I'm not out of my mind. I've, I've worked it out. Um, you know, as a life's work. And it's taken a lot of interviews with people, you know, and a lot of, you know, I had to get a lot of information that I couldn't find in books and things, you know, to find out, you know, does that exist? And, you know, with with being around that long, you know, through through kind of using my life as a sonar mechanism, I was able to map out the entire situation. And I guess the final crowning touch of it, the final graduation ceremony for me, was realizing that the um, you know the pyramids and the societies of old and, and and of recent time are all tied in, and that civilization itself, Western, Eastern, this civilization, all of it, is tied together with the same source. Um, God does not give all governments. That, of course, is a lie that's found in the Bible. We might as well just say that and get it out of the way. And however you're going to deal with it, you know, I, I believe the Bible is, sure, the inspired word of God, but you have to weed out some of the, uh, some of the propaganda that got laced in there. Over to, it's, 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 it makes sense to me if man wrote it, it's inspired. But if man wrote it, there'd be, you know, problems with it. You have to be able to discern. I'm... You know, the, the, the way that they get away with Romans 13 is by telling everyone it's the infallible word of God, literally on a surface level. So therefore, they can shove that Romans 13 down the throat of evangelical pastors and they have to go along with it. 
once you understand it's inspired, but fallible, and, and uh, you know, that, but it's the inspired word of God that it really is supernatural, you don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. It's just because there's misstatements and, and, and troublesome statements. You have to work with them. But in all the years of working with Romans 13, there has never been a way to get around it. And um, in other words, the statement does not mirror reality. If you want to say that all governments are and all things are in, under the control of God and word it that way, then I'd say, okay, then Romans 13 makes sense. But the idea of obeying evil, because God said, it's a, I'm, you know, in other words, doing evil because you think God's at the head of it, asking you to do evil is what the point is here. Of course not. If the government wants you to lie about a certain thing under oath, uh, and, and, and you say, well, all governments are given by God, so you gladly lie, you are basically blaspheming the Lord, and that's not what he said to you. He doesn't want people to lie. And the Lord is a living being. He is, is absolutely a 100% living, talking, thinking being that, you know, you can relate to. It. And, you know, but don't always expect, if you're really in touch with the Lord, it's, it's not always going to be what you want to hear. You know, just like when you encounter the Bible, it's not always going to be what you want to hear. But, you know, did, did uh, Paul write Romans 13? I don't think so. He might have written something there, but I believe it's been edited. And, and there's, a, there's just nothing I can do. And that's going to put me at odds with all evangelical. I'm not, I'm not going to be saying something is true. Um, does God oversee all the goings on on earth? Yes. Did God give all the governments? No. The governments have been given by the... Um, <clears throat> from the beginning of time, the structure of societies based on bloodletting comes from the fallen angels, from the pyramid, from the obelisk. And in Washington, D.C., we have the whole thing laid out before your very eyes. You don't have to make this stuff up. I mean, that's who, whoever invented those things is the one who created this civilization. And, um, you know, there are some very good ideas in it about liberty and tyranny and freedom of religion, but there is no freedom of real religion. There's a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. That's really what we have. So I'm going to go. I, I do believe we've, we've, we've covered this. Um, so if you're traumatized by any of this stuff, okay, that's logical. You should be. But should you get triggered through your being in denial about it to then go self-destruct? No, you need to fight against that. God doesn't want that. You know, you need to heal from those things and those people that have hurt you. Some, what I've had to do is kind of relive them and say, yes, okay, they tried to do harm. Oh, yes, they were going to, you know, they were going to light our house on fire. Yeah, they were going to, you know, yeah, there's, wow. You know, that really did happen. That, they really did do that. They really, really did say that. They really intended this, or they intended that. And I know it was hard for you to look at that. But they really did want to do you in. They really did want to destroy your life. They really did have you tossed out of your job. They really did that in an attempt to get you to commit suicide or whatever. Yes, it was all under the color of law and all men to look anonymous so that you can never know where it's coming from. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. They did all those things. What are you going to do? You're going to look at them and you're, you know, you're going to process them. Yes, in other words, this is the world we live in. And, you know, be, be wise as serpents, gentle as doves. Be, be vigilant and be aware because your enemy, you know, be uh, sober, be vigilant because the enemy, the, 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 the devil is wandering around like a hungry lion looking for whom he can devour. 24 hours a day, along with his henchmen that are constantly looking for their next sacrifice. Yes, that subterranean world we described, that really is going on. And yes, all the, the, the rock groups would all have to pay homage to it because otherwise they wouldn't be able to be famous rock groups. 
it's all tied in with the Illuminati, which is all then tied in with the, uh, with the, with, with the structure of civilization, which is tied in with the Watchers and Fallen Angels. It's all tied together. And knowing what we know, it's not easy to go forward. You know, it's, you have to do, you really have to be of sound mind in terms of recognizing what you're dealing with and then being okay with it in a kind of an abstract, detached way where you're not feeling, you know, I, I would opine with the Lord to uh, bring his justice. And then, you know, I see why it, it can't be until the end of days because, and I understand how long we're waiting while the Lord's people have been kept out and pushed down and harmed. And I realize the blood for, and the, and the this cries for justice, just to even acknowledge someone existed and were treated badly and slain, it, just that alone um, uh, you know, it's hard to take knowing it's crying, crying, crying up to the ground, wanting the Lord to set it straight and tell the truth to the people. Just to tell the truth to the people about where they were born and why and what this is all about and where they're headed. And, but that's all been covered up by very, very short-sighted people. You know, people that don't, that, you know, they made a deal with the devil in hopes that they would be protected and they wouldn't have to pay the fine, and they wouldn't get in trouble. And they were assured that you come in here with us, there won't be trouble. No more than just the normal amount of trouble, but there won't be trouble. For them out there, the unwashed, they get, they, they, they're the ones who take the blame, not you. But because of the vast numbers of people that participate in civilization, um, the only way to... to have justice of Yahweh to, to, to bring justice to the world is to overturn it. And that's billions dead. And um, the Lord will do it. But first, the clarion call for his people to come out and be with him. So they are not visited upon with all the plagues and horrors that are written in the book of Revelation. Somehow they escape it. And I say hallelujah to that. And like I say, rapture people and me, instead of calling it the rapture, let's just agree on that part of it. The Lord is good. There's no point in punishing you for what they did. You know, that's true. That's like a no-brainer. And with that, I bid you shalom, shalom. It's Zeph Daniel. This is the Zeph Report. And if you're just tuning in the first time, very unusual um, to, to get hit with a download of this much stuff in, in one day. But there's other podcasts we have going back years, and some of them may, might help. And it's kind of a, a little bit of a, a hodgepodge in terms of uh, abstracts written. I tend to want people to tune in and find out what, what it's all about rather than write an, an abstract about it. Because it was becoming, unless you had the abstract, uh, you know, you know, the abstract would sell it. And I'm like, nah, I just, I'd rather have them just tap it on and find out what it's about. So that's kind of a new, t you know, a one sentence abstract, um, I think is better than trying to explain. Explaining doesn't get anything done. And I don't think it gets people interested. Why should every single person be interested in this uh, talk? Because you're all part of civilization. You're all part of a corrupt system that will one day be put out of existence. You're all part of something where the rituals done to keep the status quo going are no longer working in average people's lives. No, they shouldn't have been doing those in the first place. I'm just saying they're not working, are they? So we are headed for some kind of cliff. And I'm just explaining to the average person why... Now, the experts already have it all figured out. Why things are the way they are. I said goodbye, and now I'm going to talk again.
you know, Obama, right? He's over in Hawaii with, you know, the kahuna gods and stuff. And, um, you know, they're basically, you know, they're trying to, Hawaii is the place over the, the, the solstice and the Christmas time and, and over this time of year where um, communing with the gods, which are part of it is a physical thing with the planets and all that, uh, would be most advantageous where he happens to be right now. And um, the more of you are tied in with astrology and astronomy, and you could probably tell me what's going on uh, with respect to that. But I think the goal is to be um, inhabited by, um, you know, the serpent. So for the Maya, it would be Quetzalcoatl. For us, it's Lucifer, whatever. It's, you know, the, the, to be, you know, to be powerfully chosen and end out to be the one. And people are looking forward to the return because this has to happen before the coronation, which is going to be in January, the coronation, and they want to they want to coronate their messiah the prince the 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 lord um satan i mean it's basically it doesn't mean they'll be successful but i mean that's 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 um i'm not the only one that said that i'm not the only one that said that there's a whole ritualistic aspect to hawaii and um you know it is speculation to a certain degree but but let's just put it this way this is what they are hoping happens, that he has new powers when he returns and assumes the coronation, which is the inauguration, but it's really in the, in the, looking at the two-tiered reality. It's a coronation. And then they're hoping that he goes forth as <clears throat> the fulfillment of prophecy to do those things that are written in, in the Bible, that you know, going forth to conquer and to conquer Egypt and to conquer... You know, I mean, he's already got Egypt, but I mean, to conquer half the world and to divide the land for spoil, because they all feel they're going to get the crumbs from it. But to have the power to do what he wants to do and no man opposes, he's almost got that now. He has powers now that are beyond. So they're just hoping for an extra bit of that. And notice how they're all falling on their petards. Nobody fights because it's this is another kind of battle. If they knew what it was, they'd all have to be picking up their Bibles, reading, praying uh, to oppose, but first getting themselves right with the Lord. And certainly a lot of people are going to do that in this period of time. But, I mean, you're dealing with some very, very huge Luciferic forces. And with that, I do bid you shalom. Goodbye. I'll see you next time.